You can dream what you want to, but I think we spend too much time dreaming, especially today. Our women need to deal with what's probable. See, you've been told dream as big as possible so you get as much, and, and the dreams you have are materialistic. Stuff. I don't want material. You asked, you, when we first started. Ma'am, ma if you, okay, ma'am. You asked me what kind of house I want. In right. You do want to, okay, you want you want at least three children. Do you want those children to be raised in a, an apartment? No. Then it's not the BS off. You do have materialism. You want. I have things you, I want, but you never asked but me. Ma but ma'am. Ma'am, you want a Porsche. Due respect, ma'am, those cars are not for average income people. I know they're not. I know they're not. So the things you want, I, I listen very well. I don't think you like the way it's coming around because I don't think you think of yourself as a materialistic person. But everything that we've talked about requires a lot of money. Yes, I know that. More money than most women earn, more money than most men earn. You said out of your mouth that by the time I start having kids, I would like to have my business and all this stuff set so I could pretty much work at my leisure. What percentage of women do you think have that option? One percent. I know it's low. What percentage? Of, what percentage of mothers in this country have to work either full or part time? I say eighty. Yep, close. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into statistics. You know, well, because because <laughs> it, it, and here's the thing. I think it would have been far better for women in general, black women in particular, to be raised with what's probable. So, because you, so many of you ladies are dreaming so big that you don't even see what's suitable for you in, right in front of you, so you overlook it. And then when what's suitable for you, you finally start recognizing because you're not getting what it is you think you deserve, y'all call it settling. One thing I want to mention. So what happened here in the beginning, this individual said that they, at the top of their peak power, so 40 years old, so 10 years, I think she's 28, think, something like that. She's going to make $300,000 a year based off of her business. Now, what do I, do I have a problem with that? Nope. I have no problem with believing. But the thing that Kevin Samuels is having a problem with, you, you can go watch this whole video. We're going to watch a little bit more of it, but you can watch the whole video. The problem that he has is that the, he... She, and this isn't a her thing. Once again, these people are just avatars. Let's talk about it for ourselves. It's very, very hard to think that you're going to make $300,000 a year without a plan. I want to say, yeah, I'm going to make six figures a year doing content creation or with the mix of public speaking. But I can't say that without a plan. Like, how am I going to get there? I can't, I don't, I don't have to have it all set out. Because, you know, life happens, you know, different avenues, you meet, you meet different people. So one opportunity that I couldn't, I, that I can't plan for, something may happen and it'll be, oh, well, it happened a little bit faster for me. Because this opportunity, I met this person at this place and it worked out. But you got to start from the end and work yourself backwards. It's like, how do I get to $300,000 a year? Well, okay, I need to have a job that makes that. Oh, no, I'm going to be running a business. Okay, how much does my business need to make for me to make $300,000 a year? It, the business could be making $300,000 a year, but I'm not getting that money. How many employees do I plan on having? Okay, if this business has two people, can two people run a business that's for me to get $300,000 a year? That means, oh, that means your business has to be making far more than that. Because remember, you got to, whatever your business is, I'm not sure what you're trying to do, but... If it's a business that's going to be, you know, physical, you got to have supplies. You got to account for losses. You got to account for no orders. You got to account for refunds. And if it's an online business, which I never understand people say I have an online business. It's like, that could be anything. <laughs> Saying you have an online business can mean you sell stickers. I like, so that's not always a stupid song. But yeah, you could be selling stickers. Like, so an online business is so fucking vague. But people will say stuff like that. And that's where Kevin is also getting upset, upset, frustrated. Because it's like, 
what the fuck are you even talking about? If somebody came to me and said, I'm going to run an online business, it's like, that can be anything. It's different when you say, I want to run a tech business where we sell TVs. Or I want to I want to have a, a, a business where I repair toilets. That, that's something I can be like, oh, okay. That's something you can start to work with. But an online business could be anything. That could be online coaching. That could be online training. That could be content creation. It's like, what is an online business? And especially an online business where you're making $300,000 a year, do you know how big your online... I mean, it's one thing to be a physical entity where you got to pay rent and all that kind of stuff. Let's see, I think being an online business, meaning you have to have a certain clientele, I just don't see how the fuck you can just say that blankly, like, oh, $300,000 a year? <laughs> you know, laughing like a, a Cardi B, you just... <laughs> like, it ain't nothing. In fact, an online business can also be... I just made six figures on my OnlyFans. Ooh. So that can be anything. So what's frustrating is like, and I've already said this, but guys, and this person reading this, this part of this manifestation is because she talks about that and just believing whatever she wants to do and not having any parameters on her dreams. You have to. Now, I've even said I have goals that are fucking to the moon that I don't think I, I can achieve, but there are parameters. I, you know what I'm saying? It's not that I'm just simply just going to say, man, I want to, by the time I'm 50, I would love to have $5 million ready to go, you know? I can say something like that, and there's nothing wrong with that part. But just to simply believe I'm going to get it just because I want to, that's goofy. And that's where she's coming from. She's just kind of like, I, just, I shouldn't have parameters. It's like, you've got to have some parameters because you can't plan your life like that. I, I talk to a friend of mine that I always have to say that to them because it's like, I can't, I can't think too far ahead. It can't be, man, I want a house with a pool, with a porch, with five kids. It's like, can I even have one? I mean, like, Slow down. Slow down, brother. I can't think like that. I got to put some parameters. It's like, well, okay, for me to get a house with a pool, I got to make a certain amount of money. How much does a house with a pool cost in my area? That's something I got to start with. This lady in this video doesn't even start with that. She doesn't know how much it costs to have a house that can house five kids. She don't know how much, how much what she needs to do to get $300,000 a year. That's putting parameters on it because you're like, I got to be logical about this. Can I afford a house with five kids? Now, obviously, I don't care how many kids you have. I am not of the mindset of don't have kids if you can't afford them. If you're married, you do not need to be, you know. But nonetheless, that's a conversation for another day. But my point is, you still need to think about it. If I thought, you know, I'm going to have as many kids as possible, it's like, well, I need to be make sure I have a job. So I, I start my career early and make sure I'm always trying to be for me personally, it's like when I go to work, go to work. I don't think about just staying at this job. I think, okay, what do I need to do to get moved up? Okay, need to get moved up. What do I need to do to get to another position? Okay, now I need to get to this position. I'm always thinking about how do I move up? Well, the first thing to start with is go to work on time. That's number one. That's the easy thing you can do. Show up to work on time. Okay, what happens if my car breaks down? I, I think about that. I need to live in a location where I could probably walk to work within an hour. I can walk an hour either. Two hours is a little far because that's four hours every day. That's taking a lot of time out of your day. But a one hour, that's that's nothing. So I think I think about where I live. It's like I need to live somewhere where I can make it to work in an hour if my car doesn't work. Okay, I can't live a I can't live 20 miles out of town. If my car breaks down, I'm fuck. Okay. If I do have no choice and I have to leave out leave out of town, what vehicle? I need that means I need to make enough money to get a car that is fairly newer. We're talking got to be like in the last five years because I need a car that's going to be able to make it back and forth that I ain't going to have to maintain. I can't buy an older car for that. See, this is the shit you gotta, that makes sense. And so that's what you're going to see in these videos is manifestation is a great thing. It's cool. But damn it, you got to have a fucking plan because if you don't, this shit adds up. I'm telling you from experience. I used to just live life on a whim. Like, guys, I'm going to tell you a dumb ass thing here in a moment. I'm going to tell you because manifestation used to be a thing of mine. And I'm going to tell you something. And when you hear it, you're going to think this. You're going to think, wow, you're an idiot. But this is, I swear to you, if you don't start to put parameters on your dreams or at least try to logically think about it, you will go to the stream like I did. Let's continue. Average looking women have always gotten with average looking men and have average lives. Except 20 to 30% of people, men in this country, own businesses. But that we have 60 to 70 percent of our women all trying to be business owners for money. For money. The reason why I want to be a business owner. 
You didn't ask me my thing. <laughs> Sorry, or you never asked. You me want to be in business? If you if, do, you want? Would you want to be in business if you were going to earn the same amount of money you would earn in a job? Yes, yes. Why? Because I realize just my passion in life, and my passion mm -hmm. is to educate and make a difference. So, if I can't do that within my job, then I prefer to do it within my business. Do you understand? If you said yes, I would. I, so get, get all all things e being equal. Well, not all things being equal. You're saying that I would rather own a business and, uh, than go to work at a job if I'm going to make the same amount of money. Yes. Do you understand that working in a business, you work far harder? Yes, I understand that. I don't so, Excuse me. So if that's the case, who's going to raise the kids? Because you got to work harder at the business than you do at the job. And you can't be in two places at one time. Can I explain to you what type of business it is? Necessarily? I don't care what kind of business it is. It's still work that has to be done. You yeah. can't be in two places at one time. No, you can't. So, either. So, what is more important to be a business person and leave your and leave your kind of dreams or passion, or to be a mother to your children and a wife? A mother's yeah. okay. If that's really if that's the case, ma'am, then I want you to go back and listen to this whole conversation because nothing that we have talked about and what you want to do, it's been your passion, your this, your that. And I'm not making it up. What I'm what I'm trying to show so many women is why it's so hard. Mm -hmm. Why 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 women are quitting matchmaking for you guys? That's why I say, guys, you got to think logical. You got to think. The Gary B effect, and I don't, I haven't watched him in years, but I remember being younger and listening. Well, I say younger, it's just a couple years ago. I remember listening to Gary V and him talking about how hard you have to fucking work, like hard work, work as hard as you can, work all the time, uh, being over, over, over productive, overly productive, right? You always got to be doing something, but not all, you can't always be productive if you're not being, if the, what you're trying to do is not smart, right? I don't know how else to explain that. That's not, that sounded stupid the way I said it, but she said she would rather work a business, make the same amount of money at a job than she would as a business. I get that logic. I honestly do, because that's what people do here on YouTube. Um, people would rather work on YouTube and make the same amount of money that they do at their job. I mean, that's that's I get that. Um, it's a little bit different than owning a business. Putting up content is a little bit, depending on what kind of content you make. Shout out to iNaver. I've been saying that for hours. Yeah, I never, yeah, that's a business. <laughs> but if you're like I said, if you're just a person who makes 10 minute videos, yeah, I wouldn't consider that a business. But if you're working in a business outside of content creation, like I said, it sounds like she's, y'all, it sounds like she's gonna do online. Cause the fact that she said that she can be home with the kids, she can be, she means she's gonna be able to do it online. Let me explain something to y'all. Cause I think this, this part gets really, really uh, mixed up. One, like Kevin said, an online business, even if you're at home, you're going to have to work way more than the average person because your your money isn't coming in. You have to make sure that everything is together every single day. So your, your eight-hour days, nine-hour days just went to 12 to 13, probably at the minimum. To run a business and get it to where you can you have to get the business to that point one day, which could be five years down the road. My homeboy, he runs a business. He works all the fucking time. He's an artist. He works all damn day promoting his shit. And he's, he's, hey, he went from this, just nobody, man. He's, he's doing good for himself now. He's, he owns a house and everything. I'm talking about owns a house, no mortgages, none of that shit. Owns a house and everything. But he's worked his ass off to get where he is. It's sun up to sun down. He always working to run his business. It's just hard, man. And so, what some people get confused is just running an online business means like you click a couple buttons, say, hey, girly. All right, I got that for you. And then you can just go sit on your ass and take care of the kids all day. And that business is going to be successful. Motherfuckers will never understand. I mean, you will understand if you do it. It's hard to understand that running a business by yourself at home, even if it's all online, to make any substantial money, it's going to take everything from you. Everything. 
And I think people really, it's, it's, it sucks, man. It really sucks because I hate seeing people fail. It sucks because people think that life is just this easy shit. I told you how many people I used to know who thought that selling eyelashes was going to make them rich. It fucking does it. Selling eyelashes. Do you know how many eyelashes you have to sell at $25 a piece for you to make be rich? When I, and I, when I say rich, I mean that you're rich no matter what city you live in. That means you have to be making at least $300,000 a year to be rich in every city you go to. Because obviously, $100,000 in Texas is not $100,000 in New York. So that's why you got to have at least $300,000. Because if you got $300,000 in Texas, that money is still going to be pretty good in New York. It, the cost of living is higher there, but $300,000, you're still making six figures in New York. I mean, you're still going to get by. You know what I mean? Um, meaning your $300,000 will go, will still go far in New York. So yeah, $300,000 a year, that's rich. That means anywhere you live, you can live the same lifestyle no matter what city you're in, for the most part. So to make $300,000 a year on an online business by yourself, because it's what it made it sound like she's going to be doing it by herself. It's like, bro, how the fuck are you going to do that at home and be able to take care of the kids? Like, you know how much time it's going to take out of you to even get it to that point? You know how much revenue you have to be bringing in? And I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a business savant. I'm not. <clears throat> but I do know $300,000 a year for you to get yourself paid that, your business has to be making far more than that. That much I do know. Okay? Because you got, you still got to be able to take care of other things. So it's just like, bro, it's just it's, it's frustrating because I want people to believe I want you guys to live whatever dream you want. I really do. And it sucks because the vast majority of us aren't going to get to $300,000 a year. That's just life. I do believe, though, and it's not just about working hard because you can work hard as a construction worker and never get to $300,000 a year. Uh, the reason I'm lower in my head because I think about this for myself. But to get three hundred thousand dollars a year, you gotta give everything. To get to that point in life, now you won't have to do it forever. But to get to that while you're still young, unless you hit the lotto or some shit, and you better not be hoping on that, or you're gonna be old and broke. To become that kind of wealth, I'm not even saying you have to make that much. I'm just talking about the people who do want to do that. This young lady happens to want to make $300,000 a year. <laughs> it's going to take fucking everything. And I, I just wish she would know. I wish she knew that. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a fat man. She's bigger too. We can't eat the same. We can't be in this kind of health working that much. We're too heavy for that. You're going to have to drop weight. You're going to have to learn to get away from your food addiction like me. To make $300,000 a year, you got to change everything. You got to change your eating habits. You got to change your sleeping habits. You got to change your gym habits. You got to change your work ethic. I mean, it's going to take everything out of you. And I hate that people think it's just so fucking easy to make money because they see one girl go to OnlyFans. I just made six figures on my OnlyFans. Ooh. They think they see people do that kind of shit or get on Twitch or get on YouTube and they, they happen to make it. And they think, oh, well, I can do it. I can just press a button. No. It's going to take everything. It's very few people in this world that luck out like that. It's very few people. And it's probably not going to be you. I want people to live like it's not going to happen for them. If you don't think you're going to make $300,000 a year, but you want to work like it's not going to ever happen. That way you put in so much work like it's never going to happen. You'll probably get there. It's going to take, it may take years, a decade or two. You can get there, but you got to work like at any moment you can lose your job. That's how I always treat my jobs. I work like I can get fired. I can't afford to get fired. I am not rich, guys. <laughs> I cannot afford to lose my job. I will be flat ass on my ass broke. Um, I, I'm still paying off debt. I can't afford to lose my job. I work my job like it's my fucking life. People, the job I have currently, it's a little bit harder to do that. Nobody really gives a shit. But, you know, I've already told, talked to you guys uh, that I want to go back to the corporate world. When I worked in the corporate world, 
And yeah, I made some mistakes trying to be the best because you do become an asshole sometimes. You got you to gotta really work on yourself. You got to learn how to work hard without getting on other people about them not working hard. But guys, I used to work like it, like it was my fucking life, man. People used to ask me, why do I care so much about the job? It's like, motherfucker, I don't want to be broke forever. I got to move up. I got to get promoted. And that's why I'm so excited to go back to the corporate world. But I'm scared to fucking death. I'm scared. I'm always afraid to lose my job. I haven't been fired from a job since I was a kid. I'm scared to fucking death to lose my job. It's embarrassing. So the next opportunity I get when I go back to the corporate world, Lord willing, I will try, I will do my best to get in better shape. I used to go to the gym every day when I was doing that job because it was important to me because it's like I need my health. I can't afford to have a heart attack. I'm being real with y'all. I'm obese. I like I can't afford to have a heart attack. So I said drop weight, all this shit. That's the same thing I'm trying to do now, even for YouTube. It's like I can't afford to die, man. My family needs me, man. I'm getting emotional. I can't afford to die, bro. I can't afford to die like this. So for me to make the amount of money I need, so if I die, my family ain't going to be hungry on the streets. My wife isn't going to be having nothing. My kids aren't going to be like, fuck, we we broke now. Well, daddy's got to work. So yeah, I got to take this shit seriously as a heart attack. I got to gotta fucking get my health in order. I got to work like it, it, like it, like like I can't afford to lose it. That's what she needs to be thinking. Like not you, you're gonna get it because you're gonna fucking manifest it. That's not it. That's not it. It's not just simply manifesting bullshit. You got to work like this shit. Your opportunity may never come again. The same thing I try to do in my own life, even when it comes to spiritual things. I try to be as honest as I can, and I'm not perfect, but I try to be like, what is this my last day on earth? And I got to look God in His eyes. This could be it. I got to live my life like it's my last. I know that sounds so fucking crazy, but it, it has to be. It has to be this way because it. people die all the time and people go away all the time. So if she really wants to make $300,000 a year, it can't be just like he said. It can't just be for the fucking money. There has to be a reason for you to make it. It can't be just because you want to go on trips to Miami or because you want to go on vacation and just live this lavish ass lifestyle. That's so fucking stupid. You need the money to make sure that your family is good if you die tomorrow. You need the money to make sure you can help other people who don't have your opportunity because they can't work like you because they may be sick. They may not have that opportunity to do what you do because life... It went different for them. They got their legs crushed. Something happened to them where they can't work like you do. And you could be the person to help them. That's why you try to make this kind of money. If that's not your mindset, that's fine. That's fine. But for the people who want to make that kind of money, stop doing the shit just to live a lavish lifestyle. That's so fucking selfish. There's no problem when to go on vacation. There's no problem when to see the world. But if that's your only motivation to make money, it's just for you. It's bullshit. You ain't going to make it. I promise you, you ain't going to make it. It's very hard to be selfish and work that hard and just keep it going. It, that All I'm saying is what she's got in her head is that I'm going to make $300,000 because I want to. And it's just bullshit. She's gonna, you're going to have to work yourself to the bone to make that kind of money. And people just think it falls out the fucking sky because they got a vision board. And I hate that for people because they're going to end up so broke because they're going to take all these loans and all this stupid shit. And they're going to listen to people who are going to be like, hey, buy this thousand dollar course. If you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year like me, you're going to go flat ass broke for that shit because you don't realize it's going to take everything for you to make that kind of money. Every fucking thing. Anyway, let's continue. Because according to the women who are matchmakers, Women today have unrealistic ex expectations. Ma'am, and, and, and off the rip, three children and a six bedroom house is an unrealistic goal for the average person. You have to have a you have to have a you have to have a substantial income. Yes, I do want a bigger bigger family. That's just the goal for me. So that, what did I, what did I, what was the other part? To have that in a six bedroom home, you have to have what? Money, income, right? Yes, right. And what? And and that's it. so. Whether you want to call it materialistic or not, that is materialistic. A six bedroom home is for people with what? A higher income, right? Right. So if your grandfather 
was an average person and your mother was an average, if your father and your mother were average people, you're the first person to go to college. Why are we going from here all the way to, to the tippy tippy top of Mount Rushmore? Why not more, more probable, which are more likely? Or do you don't, or you don't think that way? You think it's better to just put it way up here? I think it takes steps to get way up there. Okay. Uh, have you had a, okay. When was your last relationship? 2018. How long did it last? Four years. I was in a relationship like my senior year of high school, all the way up into my my last year, right before I got my bachelor. So like 2019, it's 2015 to 2019. Was, was he in college too? Nope. Was he older than you or younger? Yeah, older. How much older? Like five years. Now, what do you do for a living? Work. What does that mean? What kind of job? Oh, like a factory job. Okay. So... Let's take it away from you. If you, if there's a woman who comes from regular working class people, and she and she went and her boyfriend was a regular working class person, is it more probable that she's going to end up getting a life that's kind of in line with where she came from, or a? upper class life when you transition like a dip from the past relationship listen man I, I think a lot of people think that kevin was mean was he was he stern yeah man but to his defense like he said it's like if i don't say it the way i say it people won't get it it's not like i'm not i'm wishing you don't make it I have done this conversation with people, and this before I even knew who Kevin Samuels was. Be fair, though. I was still a fucking loser myself. But I remember talking to this individual. And this, like I said, it's before... I mean, I'm sure a lot of us had this thought, so it's not nothing special to me. Um, I wasn't wise in saying this. But a woman came up to me, and she was talking about, I'm going to be a millionaire one day. And to be fair, I got this from Gary V. Gary V didn't have this exact conversation, but he remember, I remember some girl was talking to him on the phone and she said, one day I'm going to shake your hand after I make a million dollars. And he said, well, I don't believe it now. And she said, why? She's like, you, you don't even have a, you don't have a plan yet. Gary V was the same asshole. Just like it, people say Kevin was, he just said, he just talked a little different, but he's like, how are you going to make a million dollars? And you have, you have zero idea how to even get there. You don't even have anything going for yourself. You just graduated college. You're going to make a million dollars. Like, you know, I fucking, you just, and when people say I'm going to make a million dollars, they literally mean they're going to make it year over year. That's what people say. When they say they make a million dollars, they don't mean they're going to stop. They mean they're going to make a million dollars annually. You know, how, what what can you do as a high a college graduate to make millions a year? Come the fuck on. You know what I mean? You're just telling me you're going to be a billionaire pretty much. You know how hard it is to be a, anyway. So. This woman came up to me and she said, I'm going to be a millionaire. And I remember asking the same question. I said, how? That's all I said. And she said, because I believe. I said, okay, that's far to believe, but like, what are you going to do? A job, a business. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, what's going to get you to the million? I mean, you got to have some type of plan. And then she got upset with me because she's like, why are you always trying to ruin my dreams? It's like, I'm not trying to ruin your dreams. Simply asking these questions because it's like, well, how the fuck are you? You need to ask yourself, how am I going to get there? How am I going to make a million dollars? Guys, let me tell you something. I just mentioned I want to go back to the corporate world. I know exactly what I want to do. As of right now, now things could change. I may hate the job. I may hate getting up there. I can tell you one thing. I know. I've been a supervisor and I've worked in corporate. I really want to work in HR. Okay. I want to be an HR assistant. I want to start there. You know, obviously go from HR assistant to HR coordinator. And at certain jobs, there's like a president of HR. It just depends on where you work, HR, HR coordinator. Eventually, I want to work my way up to VP of talent acquisition at a, at a job. I've looked into what that is, and it sounds like it's right up my alley. It sounds like something I really do because you got to fuck with clientele. I love fucking with clients. 
right now I can't do that. Not, not, not even close. But that could be a decade from now. I don't even care. That's something I don't care if I have to wait 10 years to get it. That's fine. I don't care if it takes me 15 as long as I'm moving up. But I have a tangible plan. I know exactly how much I want to make when I get there. I want to negotiate how much I want to make. But damn it, Lord willing, if I get all the way up there, man, I have a plan. I already know exactly what I want to do. Like the second I go back to my corporate job, I already know exactly what I want to do. And I already know what I want to do with the money I make. Like what I want to do, where, what charities, what giving back to my church. Like I, I think about these things a lot. But my point being in all that is, I have a, a career plan mapped out. I know in order to get to this job, I have to first get a job in the company. It's just like some people who want to get a job at a hospital that doesn't hire a lot, right? The best way to get in sometimes, guys, is to just start at the bottom. Whatever job they got, house cleaner. Okay, this job ain't hired for nothing fucking. Not. That's pretty rare that a job won't hire for nothing else. But the best thing you can do, if you're, especially if you're still young and just getting into college, go be a housekeeper. Get yourself in the door. That way, when you want to become a nurse or something, let's say that's where you're on your path, you want to be a nurse in labor and delivery, which is pretty hard to get into for a lot of places. If you, especially, you know, if you, especially depending on the uh, place, but there's some jobs in nursing that is very hard to get into because people love that one. There's other stuff that's easy because people don't want to do that. Labor and delivery is one of those jobs that a lot of people like to do. So, to get into there, you need to work at the hospital already. So you do what you got to do. You become a nurse in another area. And that way, the day it does happen, you keep talking to your managers, keep saying, so, I mean, like, if I wanted to do labor delivery, like, like how would I ever get over there? You keep doing that. And it may take a year or two or three. And in that third year, they're finally like, hey, so-and-so just quit. We needed somebody here. You've been asking about it. I see you're a hard-ass fucking worker. I know you're going to do the job. You don't miss. You don't do a lot of calling out, you know, unless you're sick, really sick or something. You're really on time. I can tell. Boom! Your labor delivery now. But there's a plan and stair-stepping that gets you to these points. So, <laughs> once again, the reason I say all that kind of shit, man, is because you just got to map it out. You just got to keep planning for it. Keep doing that. The chances of her becoming the three hundred thousand dollars a year, having these big aspirations, to me, and I'm with Kevin. The reason Kevin has to be so hard because it's like, man, I don't mind. He's not saying you can't do it. It's just like the way you talk about it, though, ain't gonna work. That baby girl who wanted the million million dollar job, and she wants to make a million dollars a year, that was talking to me, not gonna happen. This was the no offense, no, this is offense towards her. I, I can't help that. She was one of the worst workers I knew. So that's why I really asked. I'm like, what the fuck? You can't even show up to your $10 an hour job. There ain't no way you're going to get there. They look, people who make that kind of money, a million dollars a year, we're talking about CEOs of huge ass companies. We're not talking about your average Joe. I mean, I don't know anybody in my, I do know one person who makes that much money a year, but they're an athlete. So I don't, I don't know anybody else in the world that's even close to sniffing a million dollars a year. So I don't, I don't, I can't sit here and say I know what it would take, but the people I know who are pretty wealthy, they work pretty fucking hard and they don't make anything close to that. So it's like, <clears throat> you think I got to get in there and you're lazy here? I don't know. I don't know. To, to, to you, to all women, because what I'm asking you, you come from average. It's not, it's not, it's not the norm that you transition to upper class. No, it's not new. So, in order for it to happen, it's exceedingly what? Rare. I understand. So, if it's exceedingly rare, it's a rare woman that gets it. And I'm and I th and all the men are sitting there pulling uh pulling their hair out because what I'm saying to, to most women seems like you're just killing her dreams. No, I'm actually opening up your life to say, dream fine, but dream realistic. Because life is cold. Mm -hmm. When you go out and when you go out into Chicago or wherever to get into, if, even if you went out, you'd be standing in line to get in the club or the spot with everybody else. The kind of women. To, to get the kind of men you're talking about or in VIP. So it is far better to be realistic with what it is because your goals are very high and you can have them 
but frustration in life tends to come when uh, expectations don't meet with reality. And your 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 goal was some of the highest I've, I've talked to in the last several months. That's really I'm, high. So I like to have that passion, dream high, because if you wake up, meditate, and you know, think that this is going to happen, push yourself read books, learn, take courses into ways to get to that place and break that barrier. And that's just been my thought process on it. Okay. So that's why I tend and to... What's your degree? You said your degree is in what? So my bachelor's in advertising and public relations and then mm -hmm. my master's is in um, education and student affairs and leadership. And are you, are you working right now? You said you had a I just finished this year. So okay. yeah, I'm working right now. Hey, I'm gonna let her talk, but uh, hey guys, both of those degrees, she wasted her money, advertising, and then get a degree in uh, she say leadership and student affairs, bro. Those are jobs you get just to, bro. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, like I got no problem getting degrees like that, but the only people I know who have those degrees, um, are people who work in admissions office <laughs> at a college and they have it up on their thing. Like those aren't people that are $300,000 a year. I promise you, they're not making anything close to six figures. Those degrees do, do, do have no return on investment. The, 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 the amount of loans you got to get, especially some of these people go to these big ass colleges to go get a degree in, um, in student affairs and leadership. It's just like, bro, that, that's a, that's a, that's a waste of a degree. Those kind of people, like I said, they, I've never seen them like, wealthy now this is anecdotal i could be wrong i could be a dumbass i'm sure but i ain't never seen that degree go far i you know i was in college in honors college and stuff like that and i didn't know anybody at honors college who was getting the degree in affairs every honors college student i knew i knew not saying all of them the ones i knew engineering nursing engineering nursing were obviously the top two Actually, I can't think of anybody who was doing business. It was engineering, nursing, probably business. Like I, the only people I could think of I knew were doing nursing and engineering, and then yeah, probably business management or something like that. But it was just so rare to come with somebody come who said I'm going to get my master's in student affairs and leadership. You just like, what does that even fucking mean? Oh, you mean you're going to go work for a college? That's all. That's the first thing I think about when I hear that. It's just the student affair part. In the leadership, it's just like, oh, that's the degree that you're getting to go work in an admissions office because they told you they want that. <laughs> you're going to be somebody that nobody knows. You know what I mean? <laughs> nobody even knows what the fuck you do. Uh, so how long you had a job? How did your job? Um, For a couple months. I, I just literally graduated, so I just finished my past job. But And you're, and you're, and you're making your entry-level income is in what range? Um, I'll say like... 40, 50,000. Mm -hmm. And do you have a business yet? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's $40,000 $40, a year. That's 20 bucks an hour for a master's degree. She's making 20 bucks an hour. Motherfucker, you can go work at the post office. Their starting pay is at 19. No degree. You got a whole ass degree to get 20 bucks an hour? Come on, G. Just starting my business. And what's that business? Um, it's called branding expert. So yeah, okay, so so but but I think it's fair to say that at your age, you really don't have much experience. You don't have a client base. I just started, and I have a client. so so okay. Even if you have a client base, it's not. It, it can't be. But it doesn't. It's, go it's not. It's nothing over. No. So my point is, man. No, you are you just graduated yeah you're making 20 some odd dollars an hour and instead of and when most people and that's with the masters when most people would be sitting down saying you know what i need to get good at doing this one thing you're doing this thing and you got this thing no and, i'm doing one thing you got well, a business and got getting my business so I guess that's two things. I'm working and starting my business. I know you can't serve two masters. So I know what it means to have a, to either you have a career, but you got a career and a side hustle. Yes, but it, in order to grow that 
it has you have what so what are you saying? You saying you can only work or be a business? I, I, what I'm saying is um what I'm saying is the person who has twenty five plus years in corporate America, eleven years in advertising and marketing, you ladies come along every day thinking just because you can get an LLC. I never said all of that. <laughs> Ma'am, my okay. My point is you haven't accomplished anything yet and your your dreams are extraordinarily high. You don't even have a year under your belt. So starting a business, in my personal opinion, for somebody who's your age, who has, <clears throat> how are you going to help market somebody on branding? Because it's all theory at this point. You haven't worked for anybody. Okay, man, I understand. <laughs> see, see, when you, when it's, this is why the, I think the internet is so good, but it's also so dangerous. The way business works is you used to have to actually go out and, and be something. You had to go work for somebody to learn something. And then once you became proficient or an expert in it, then you were then qualified to go start your own business and go to the market and say, I'm qualified because I worked for Acme and Company or Johnson and Son. I learned from these people. But today, because you have the internet and you can put a website out, people think you can just speed the process up when at the end of the day, the consumer, the market hiring you is hiring a novice. You don't have any work history to pull from. The only thing you have to pull from is what you've learned. Yes. And what you charge somebody for in the open market is unfair. You're charging them basically to practice on. Uh, we got to let him finish that thought. We're going to let him finish that thought. But that that was a lot. Man, like I said, man, these videos are not anything towards the young lady. These videos are from me, too. Like, I need to hear this shit all the time. That's why I always go back and watch his videos and other videos. And when people are talking to people and giving them advice, I don't give a fuck about them. I care about me. It's like, what, what do I need to get out of this? He's just he using her to educate us. So when people think, like, oh, he's crushing her, it's like, fuck her. Not, not towards you, young lady. But more of the, hey, I'm trying to teach y'all, but I need her to be the avatar because you're not here. So let's go back. Shh, you can't serve two masters. She's wanting, and this is what some people got to be careful when they do when they also start up a business and stuff like that. Because he's right. People will come right out of college or people will... <laughs> In content creation, people will sell courses and they've been on YouTube for six months. It's the same people who get on here and say, hey guys, here's how you get 100,000 subscribers in six months. It's like, you can't teach me that. You just happen to get 100,000 subscribers, right? You just started in the game. And so, I guess it's not a perfect analogy because college is a lot different. More hours into it, but nonetheless. People who want to start a business and there's a people like I can only I can kind of understand when it comes to like online coaching. And I'm talking about people who are fitness trainers. Like think about Chris Jones, known as Beast Mode Jones on YouTube. He is a trainer. But he has before he became a trainer, he was just working a normal job. I think he said he was working at Walmart. But he kept his body in such physical, he kept himself in such great shape. By the time he finally came to YouTube and started his online coaching, he knew how to be in shape. He knew what it felt like to get to go from a skinny dude to a muscular dude. He went from that to learn how to maintain size. He learned how to eat. He learned how to do the macros. Before he stepped foot on YouTube to start teaching people and then go into his online coaching, he knew how to do this because he had already been doing it. By that time, he had already been doing it for what? I think he had started at 15 or something like that. So by the time he finally stepped on YouTube, it had been 13 years. By the time he stepped on YouTube, he had already gone through the process of 13 years of doing it. So yeah, I could teach you something. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I had to learn it the hard way. I had to get it out the mud. I was working off Walmart protein and I still got here. I still look better than the vast majority of most men. And so when you want to go start an online business, I got no problem with that, but it's very foolish to be like, well, I just graduated college and I'm going to teach you how to market. It's like, you've never even done it. You know, how can you teach me how to do that? You ain't never worked under nobody who does marketing. You don't, uh, 
You make t- you just got into the job and you're gonna charge me. He, man, Kevin made a great point. And this is why you sometimes you get somebody who's been in that world and he's been in that world. But you're gonna charge me money for something you don't know how to do. So I'm just pretty much a guinea pig. You're gonna learn how to do this with me, with my money. Man, that's such a good thing. It's just it's wrong to do people like that. You shouldn't be t- you shouldn't be an online coach and a fitness. Uh, fitness coach. What do I think of what they call it? Fitness trainer? Uh, it's something else, ain't it? Anyway, become a trainer. It's kind of hard for you to teach people to do that. And you just got in shape six months ago. You were a fat ass, and now you, um, <laughs> you're a fat ass, and now it's now you've lost all the weight. It's been six months, and now you got to teach people how to stay in shape and maintain it. Like you haven't maintained it yourself yet. You have no idea what it's really like to work out. You know how to, you know how to lose weight, but to be fair, you have only lost the weight once, and you were a fat ass at some point. And two, you haven't even you don't even know how to keep the weight off. Just get some skin in the game. There ain't nothing wrong with losing weight and saying, "Hey, I want to be a coach to help other people." That's fine. Tell people how you lost the weight, but that doesn't mean you can start charging people three hundred dollars to get advice from you, or a thousand dollars a month to get personalized online training. It's like, bro. You just lost the weight. You don't even know how to maintain it first. Can you can you keep it off for like five years first? Like keep it off. Because most people who lose weight, they gain it back. So it's like, that's what I mean. It's just like Kevin was God, this is a great video. Yeah, because I need to hear this shit. Before you can teach people, and we just went over this already. If you saw my last video, or if you're watching this live stream, obviously. Uh we just talked about. How somebody can be like, hey, quit your job to get on YouTube. It's like, you haven't been on YouTube long enough to quit your job. Can you get some skin in the game? Can you learn how to maintain the money? And there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five and doing YouTube. Like I said, there's the, the people I follow, they work. They are not just YouTubers. They all work. <laughs> I don't know if I never does. Shout out to I never again. But the people I follow, like I said, my boy Anton Daniels, my boy, uh, these are my friends. I'm just saying my boy. Um, um, media man. I can't believe I forgot his fucking name. Lolita Turdy, MTR, even Abba and Preach. I don't know. A lot of y'all know them. They were comedians. I don't know if they still do it, but as far as I know, they're still comedians. So even while they were doing the YouTube thing, they still had jobs. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't understand why this concept of I have to give up everything to be a content creator. And if you do do that, one, you, you still need to figure out a way to make at least two more incomes. That way YouTube ain't your bread and butter because if they terminate your channel, you're dead. You got to go back to work. Because honestly, to make enough money on YouTube to sustain you for the rest of your life, you're probably going to have to be on YouTube for at least 10 years, right? You got to be on it for a while. Because we're talking, unless you're really successful, you're going to need to be on here to make that two, three million dollars you're going to need to make you the rest of your life, right? So anyway... My my point, <laughs> fuck! Don't you hate when that shit happens? You're on your you're on fire, and then you you get off on a little bit of a tangent, and you now you're fucking gone. But nonetheless, what you got to do is continue to move forward in that direction. Continue to. <laughs> oh my god! Give me a second, just to fucking gather my thoughts here. But nonetheless, you need to have a plan. You need to get when you when you want to do this kind of shit full time and you want to teach other people about it, you've got to put some skin in the game. You really got to hone in on your craft. I don't do any courses and any of that. Now, if I had a hundred thousand subscribers, I would definitely get on here and teach every now and then, but I would never make a course or anything. At least not right now. I wouldn't do any course or anything until I was this, this was my life. Like I, I like I said, my floor is five thousand dollars. Then I would teach, because then I'd be like, okay, I, I got something five thousand dollars. That's above average. I'm making way more than that. Then I could be like, hey guys, here's what you need to do. I'm not gonna ever do that or ever charge anybody like for a Patreon or anything until I have real value to give. And probably by the time if I ever get there, two hundred thousand subscribers, then I'll, I'll by far I'll probably have had at least eleven years on YouTube at that time. Maybe like, okay, I've been in the game a while. You know, I can I can tell you the ups to downs, and I've been live streaming. For a very good while now. And I do live stream longer than most YouTubers. I don't live stream as long as Twitch people. Because Twitch people, they go like 8, 10 hours. I don't make that kind of content. But I can tell you how it feels to live stream on YouTube for 
a long time. I'm, you know what I mean? And so, like I said, I probably made more live streams than a lot of YouTubers. I'm just, I'm not there yet. Nonetheless, my point is, get some skin in the game. Put some work in the game. So you can really not fuck people over by teaching them bullshit that you don't know because you went to college for it. That degree don't mean shit. Let me say that again. That degree don't mean shit. And I want the people to hear it from way downtown. That don't mean shit. You need experience to teach people. You need experience. That's like a nurse coming right out of college. I'm sorry, I, I relate the most to nursing right now. That's like a nurse coming right out of college and saying that they can be the... That's a nurse coming right out of college and saying, well, guys, I'm going to teach you how to be a nurse. I mean, you can't teach me shit about being a nurse. You just got out of college. Of course, yes, they've had clinicals and stuff like that, but they still can't teach you how to be a nurse. You know what I mean? Because they haven't had there's a lot of fields they haven't been in. And you guys, to even be a travel nurse, you need to have, they, they, always, they always ask you to have at least a year of experience. And a lot of travel nurses, they have to have two years of experience to even go travel because they don't want to teach you to be, you know why? Because they don't want to teach you to be a nurse again. You, isn't that crazy? They don't want to teach you how to be a nurse. They want to teach you the job. Don't you think that's crazy that they have two years of experience to even do that first? They don't come right out of college into travel nursing because they're like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. I'm not about to teach you how to be a nurse on the floor. I need you to know what you're doing already. Damn, people want to go graduate from nursing with the with their associates and then immediately go, yep, I want to be a CRNA. Let me teach you how to do it. I'm like, what? That's that's how this works. So, and then, and the funny thing is, while you're doing this, if you're doing something in your side job that is a conflict of interest with your current job, that is unethical. No, they're too deaf. They're sick. good. But my point is, how are you going to become a, a professional or an expert at this and grow this when both of these things require full focus? What is the other thing that you're saying? My, my job? You have a job oh, okay. and a business. Okay. Both require full focus. But it makes sense because you talk about children and being a mother and a wife the same way. And being a mother and a spouse requires full focus. Not something you just do as an afterthought. But this is why so many women, that's why I have that whole song, I'm a PhD. Y'all think that getting married and having a kid is just, I'll just get married and have a kid. And because I'm making some money, I'll hire people to raise my family. And then I'll just get a guy with money and it'll work out and it doesn't. Probability, one in four black women will marry. And the average black marriage is lasting less than five years. When when the divorce is filed, sadly, women are filing because the irreconcilable difference is unhappy. And you're usually unhappy because your expectations don't meet with reality. Your expectations are going to be really high. So I'm going to, t I'm going to say that go back and listen to this segment. Uh, because, you know, it took me off guard of where I wanted to be, but this is, far too many women are thinking like this. There's no relationship possible. With a woman who wants to, to, to have something, I mean, it's almost like you want to be a man. <laughs> you got all these dreams and I got this and that, and I want this, because to get the outcome, to get the lifestyle you want, you got to make a lot of money. I don't care how you slice it. And I'm gonna ask you this, and then we're gonna wrap up. With no heat, no judgment, men. I need you to understand that no heat, no judgment, men. But coming from average middle class people, where did such an appetite for this lifestyle come? Porsche trucks, six bedroom homes, jobs, and businesses. Where, where did that appetite come? From? just furthering my education and my passion. It didn't come from my parents. It didn't come from my family. Well, then your education, okay. No, okay. Education. I'm not saying college. I'm saying learning. Ma'am, what I'm saying, the, the lifestyle you're talking about mm -hmm. 
where did coming from regular working class people, where did the appetite to say, ah, I don't want to have this. I want to have that. When you see your mentors have that. (laughs) Okay. Well, you have, you have mentors who are millionaires. Yes. Since what age? What you mean? What age? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go, before we go, before we go. I want to explain this because <sighs> obviously I've seen these videos. Obviously already. Because, but I want to explain to you for you people who may not understand me so you'll understand what he's about to say. So th- these millionaire mentors, okay, these are people who mm, I don't want to be uh, hyperbolic here, but these most of these people, they make money off the people, of poor, they, ma- they make money off the backs of poor, foolish people. So these are the people who you see, like the Ty Lopez's, the people who started off like that. Like, I'm just here in my garage. That's what people will consider their many of their mentors. Um, I forgot what the name of the guy who used to do high ticket marketing, um, who was a flat out liar, ended up getting his home uh, repoed. But it's that same guy. It's those same guys who pretend to be rich. They act like they're rich. And their money, is, the only reason they're wealthy is because of you believing that they're rich. So when she says million millionaire mentor, they may they very may well have a million dollars. Most of them don't. They just lie about having that money and tell you that so you can keep paying them. Just like the million dollar trucker, if y'all remember her, same thing. Was getting evicted from place and place to place to place. And people who were real truckers were like, "There's no fucking way you're making a million dollars a year." She says she made somewhere upwards of a hundred million dollars trucking. And she had what three years of experience? It was something silly. In three years, you made a hundred million dollars trucking. And so other people were looking at her who were truckers and like, get the fuck out of here. But people were buying her courses because they believed. Oh yeah, she said she made it. Gotta believe it. So these million millionaire mentors, when I hear that word, I just think, oh, that's bullshit. So you're paying them, you're paying them pretty much, right? They're your mentor because you pay them. And, you, and you've been to their house and you've done all this shit. It's all secret. Guess who also fucked around with million, million or min, millionaire mentors? I knew a millionaire mentor. Turned out to be a... He did have money, but it turned out he was a fraud. Pyramid scheme. Pyramid scheme. Got all their money frozen and everything taken away. They were in the fucking newspaper and online talking about how they got shut down because of a pyramid scheme. And this was my mentor. I wanted to be a millionaire like him. Turns out he was a fucking fraud. So when you hear these millionaire mentor people talking about all this money you can make, especially if it's a pyramid scheme, but you'll know if it's one of those. I got a whole video on pyramid schemes if you want to watch it. Um, it's called about the, the content creator who disappeared. That's a good video if you want to learn about pyramid schemes. But nonetheless, nonetheless, when you hear millionaire mentors, if you ever hear anybody talk about millionaire mentors, please get the fuck away from them. Because don't let them talk to you. Don't let them talk to you into it. And you just, you be honest with them. You ain't got to shut them down and not be their friend, but just don't get caught up in it. And at any chance you get, look into the millionaire mentor. I want you to look them up. Most of these people you can find in YouTube and anything, but look them up. Be like, how did they make their money? How did they get here? Oh, they have a degree in nothing, and somehow they make millions of dollars a year? Oh, let me go look at their course. Oh, their course is $999. Oh, and now, and then you can upgrade to $2,000 a month if you want to be in the inner group. And $10,000 a month if you want to be in the inner, inner black group. You know what I mean? And when I say black group, I mean like the black squad. You know, y'all all wear black. Yeah. Go look into them. Anyway. So this is a new thing? Yes, this is new. And how old is your mentor? Um, he is about 30. I don't know the exact age, but he's in his 30s. And how many mentors is this? I have three mentors. And they're all millionaires? Two are one not. In the, and how, how old is the oldest? Um, the oldest, he's forty-one. Is he married? He's not, but the other one, spectacular. He's he will. He's not married, but he's um engaged. So, 
did you meet these millionaires at school? No. I mean, those mentors at, mentors at school? No, I took their course. Well, one, I took his course, and one I met through him. Course? Course, like a course. Okay. What did I say? Now, once again, I've seen this video. But I haven't seen this video in a very long time. It's been a very long time since I've seen this video. But I don't even need to hear that part. I already knew the course thing was coming. Once again, guys, I'm a YouTube freak. And so I can tell you how many times I've came across YouTubers who sell courses. But like I said, even in my real life, I came across this. It always fucking happens. Buy a course, and that's where they make their money. Yeah. Where'd you where'd you find these courses? Education. What you mm -hmm. say? Where'd you find these courses? On, um, just Instagram. I found spectaculars on Instagram. So you found. So you were looking for them, or you saw them in the feed or something? Looking for them. You were looking for them. How'd you know to look for them? Because I wanted to learn about entrepreneurship and how to grow on social media. Thank you. And Thank you. That's what, and that's exactly what I mean. Ultimately, thank you. This is why we end up is so thrown off as a culture. We are so quick to be trying to look for a cheaper, quicker route. It's not cheap, oh, ma'am. I need. So, what's the easiest way to get a? Minute? There is no free money. You're an average woman with an average degree. You don't get to. These people don't get to be millionaires. So my point is, I'm, I'm going to talk right past you. This is why multi-level marketing, these get-rich-quick schemes, these uh, courses are so rampant in the Black community because we don't want to do it the slow, long way that's been shown to work. Everybody's... Remember I ran that show, The Lion's Den, with Ramil Amir a year and a half ago, where the shark tank meets the voice. We had so many people coming in who wanted. My saying was before I got a PhD was, "There's no such thing as free money. Everybody wants free money. You just sat here and uh, and um, laid out a life of a woman who was raised probably middle class from just solid, decent, hardworking folks. Then all, but then because you've heard entrepreneurialism." which is everywhere now, everywhere. You didn't go to college to be an entrepreneur. You went to college to get a degree. What'd you go to college for? Well, it wasn't to be an entrepreneur. What were you going there for first? Advertising and public relations. Thank you. Advertising and public relations because you're going to go get a job. But because you get on Instagram or Facebook and because all these ads for Ty Lopez and these guys, looking over here, you can make this much money. They're everywhere. That's it's not... I'm, 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 no, 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 I know what I'm talking about. I don't need you to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. No, the black community don't educate. Okay, I, I don't, I know what I'm talking about. Yep. Right. I know what I'm talking about. Bye-bye. Uh -uh. don't, <laughs> don't need no part of this. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so, yeah, man, the courses and getting people to want free money and all this stuff. Bro, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. If you want to make money, you want to make that real bread. I completely understand. My issue is, I used to be the same fucking way. When I was a young man, guys, I can't tell you how many shit I got, how much shit I got into, um, because I wanted to make money. I'm gonna tell y'all a secret. Not a secret. I've talked about it before, but I remember, I remember I told you I had the same stupid fucking ideas. At one point in my life, I thought I was gonna make. $35 million. I thought I'd be a millionaire at 35. Stupid, right? Because I'm an idiot. But I used to want to get rich quick, too. I used to buy courses. I used to buy Instagram posts. I used to buy all types of shit because it's like, this is how I make money. This is the easy way. I used to sit through seminars. I used to sit through so much shit because I'm like, this is how I'm going to make money. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be so fucking rich by the time I'm 30. So. Nope. And now I've come to the mindset that I, I don't mind doing it the long way. I just told you guys to do the dream job I want. I already know it's going to take probably about 10, 15 years to get there. And I'm okay with that.
I know I'm going to be broke for the foreseeable future. But to, in order for me to finally get myself out of debt and everything, I got to put in the work. This you think this YouTube thing can pop off. That's great. I put in a lot of work in the YouTube too, as you can see. But I, I, I know I might have to do both. And I don't mind doing both. I don't mind for, if in the next five years, if I'm working my way up, starting back at, hey, let's be honest for a second. I don't care if I have to start back at 10 bucks an hour. That's not a fucking thing. That's $20,000 a year. Broke. I don't mind starting back at that to move my way back up the corporate ladder because I left it for a stupid reason. But I don't mind climbing back up the, that ladder again and working my ass off. And I know I'm behind. And I know it's going to take me 10 plus years to get probably get where I want. I need it to be already. But I'm going to work my ass off and do what I got to do. But nonetheless, I'm going to have to do it the slow way. I tried to do it the fast way. And I wasted four years. I wasted four, four years trying to make money the quick way. I won't waste another four. So I'm going to put my ass back at work. I'm already working now. But I'm going to put my ass back in this chair, work my ass back off again and get back to the top. Well, not back to the top top, but get my ass back where I need to be. And we're going to keep grinding. This time I'm going to do it the slow way. I'm, I'm, I'm invested 15 years to get where I want to get. I'm like, if, if I live long enough, 15 years, I'm going to put it in. And there's nothing wrong with doing it the slow way. I can, in 15 years, guys, I could be making $300,000 a year. I could. If I if I put together this YouTube channel and put together that job, yeah, I can make it $300,000 a year. But it's going to be a slow grind. That's that's 15 years, 365 days a year. Ain't going to be no breaks. You know, maybe some PTO here and there. Or we're talking at least 350, 350 days a year. God. We're talking probably, let's see where that would be. I'm not going to do the math. We're talking at least over 10,000 days, probably. I'm putting in the work. And I'm okay with that. I got to calculate that, guys. But I'm perfectly okay with that. Oh, yes. I got that completely wrong. 5,250 years. Why do I think 10,000? 5,250 days of this. But that's okay. That's okay. Anyway. That's it. Goodbye.